please put your hands together for the high representative of the Union of Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josette Borrell. Welcome to the Schumann Show. Thank you so much, Kelly. It's a pleasure being here. The, ple the placer is all mine. Please, have a seat. Yeah, yeah I have nothing better to do, really. And uh, it's always good to see what the so-called European elite does when they are not, uh, what's the word, getting blackout drunk in Plux. Well, I, I think this is a better night than Plux for sure, right, audience? Uh, at least the front row thinks so. I'm sorry, Kelly. Uh, I think I've done it again. Uh, you see, some people have pointed out that I have a, a tone issue and that sometimes I... I make uh, undiplomatic remarks, so my dear, dear, dear colleagues at the EAS have insisted to assign me an individual personal translator. <laughs> and they insisted that I bring him along. Oh, was it that worried-looking man that I yes. saw backstage? he looks very worried all the time. That can oh, I can yes, tell. yes. Uh, oh, you can, you can come in, you can come in. Can we bring our PC interpreter in, please? Yes, here he is. Hi. Hi. Um, I did also already hear some of Mr. Burrell's comments from backstage, and uh, of course, what the high representative intended to say um, <laughs> was that this show truly brings together uh, European citizens for a conversation about the future of our continent and is equal to Place Lux in terms of diplomatic strength. <laughs> well. It's, it's great to hear that, and in fact, uh, let's talk a little bit about those undiplomatic remarks, because uh, one got you in quite a bit of hot water. Uh, I'm talking, of course, about the time that you compared uh, Europe to a garden and the rest of the world to a jungle. Would you care to explain what you meant? I'm never going to hear the end of this, really. You see, Kelly, what I meant was that we have to be very grateful for what Europe has to offer. Uh, but maybe you're right, I should have chosen a better metaphor. Maybe, maybe saying that Europe was a five-star hotel <laughs> and the rest of the world a stinky motel near Gare du Midi. The, the, the high representative, of course, believes that like a five-star hotel, Europe should accommodate all of its citizens' needs. That's all he said. All right. Well, let's get on to your portfolio. I'd like to ask you a question about Ukraine first. Uh, so, <laughs> recently, member state support for Ukraine has been waning, and Hungary's government in particular has been questioning the aid that's being given and even accession talks. So what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> let me put it this way, Kelly. I have a big um, hemorrhoid <laughs> on my right butt cheek, and I haven't been able to sit comfortably for a long time. Sounds painful. Yes, it's oof. You don't want to know. And uh, so I call that hemorrhoid Victor Orban. <laughs> uh, with my friends, mostly, but now it's out there anyway. Uh, I sometimes did, I just wake up. Did the high representative, of course, wish to say uh, that the rule of law brings the European Union together. Frankly, Kelly, this is a mess. Sometimes I wake up and I just wish that we had nuked Putin from the very beginning and none of us, all of these council meetings and everything would have happened. Mr. Mr. Burrell definitely did not just mention nuclear weapons at all. <laughs> what about accession for Ukraine? Are you pro-accession for a hundred, Ukraine? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. We have to support the membership of Ukraine, no matter how corrupt a country they may are. <laughs> Because we already have Cyprus, Malta, <laughs> the Netherlands. I mean, what, what's one more? The, the, the high representative, like, of course, the entire European Commission supports succession of Ukraine and s believes that Ukraine will meet the same great European values and standards as other member states have met via the Copenhagen criteria. Yes, sorry, and I don't want to be undiplomatic here. Not uh, only really? Ukraine, but also all the other corrupt candidate countries, <laughs> such as Albania, Moldova, uh, Macedonia, all of them. You mean North Macedonia? Sorry? He, he definitely meant that, <laughs> yes. North Macedonia? 
Yeah, Macedonia, North Macedonia, you know. Uh, is this all the same fruit salad for me, really? I, you know? <laughs> Don't be all moussaka here, you know? <laughs> the high representative, of course, deeply understands the decades of diplomatic efforts that went into solving the crisis between Greece and North Macedonia. And uh, if you didn't hear the North before Macedonia, it's because he said it really quietly. <laughs> Well, let, let's move on to the Middle East. Uh, you mm. recently visited the region. Uh, what's your take on the war? Well, <laughs> the Middle East, the Middle East is what we in Catalan commonly know as an embolic de couillons. Um, thankfully, as an EU translator, I don't speak Catalan, so I don't know what he said. Uh, in English, I think the technical term is a shit show or a, sh <laughs> or a shit storm, depending on the winds. Uh, but yeah, I went out there, uh, it was so nice, uh, and then I tried to explain them how things are done, but it's very difficult with these people. And, and frankly, after so many years of European colonialism, we have about the same credibility as uh, Jean-Claude Juncker doing Dry January. <laughs> it's like preaching in the desert, if you know what I mean. The high representative, the high representative, of course, believes that the Middle East should remain an important, uh, important target of European foreign policy and that we will continue to work to share European values with our trusted partners in the region. Well, speaking of uh, trusted partners, many people in Israel um, were angry mm. that you questioned Israel's actions uh, during your visit there. How would you describe your relations with Israel? Look, Kelly, <laughs> I love Israel. In fact, did you know that uh, I lost my virginity in a kibbutz? Oh, holy fuck. <laughs> did you? At the high representative, of course, uh, believes that Israel remains an important trust it's a part of the it's a, fascinating, it's a fascinating story. I'm sure the people who want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> it was the summer of love, 1969. Uh, Jimi Hendrix was all over the radio, and I was a young man with a, believe it or not, prodigious shock of hair, ready to live the dream of Jewish socialism. <laughs> And the, there I was, picking olives in the Negev. The High Representative <laughs> would like to reiterate that Israel remains an important trusted partner of the European Union. It's gone, I've forgotten, sorry. Well, uh, Commission President von der Leyen was also in, uh, in Israel recently, and uh, as have other uh, European uh, leaders, uh, which begs uh, the question that actually the late Henry Kissinger famously said, if I want to call Europe, uh, who do I speak to? So who should they speak to, Joseph Borrell? Well, first of all, Kelly, uh, respectfully, let me disagree. I don't think Mr. Kissinger was late. I think it was about time. <laughs> now, that being said, if anyone is interested in calling the Europe, they should call me. And in fact, uh, Joe, if you are watching, uh, she, uh, all the other foreign leaders whose no names I'm sure I know, Please take paper and pa pen and paper. I miss, wait a second, my grandson programmed this for me. So it's plus 34. <laughs> Mr. Burrell, let me, uh, Mr. Burrell, um, of course, invites all world leaders to, to contact ec.europa.eu. If it's working. Well, we don't have much time, but I do have one last question for you. And it's, it's one of a more personal nature because uh, your Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, uh, recently struck a deal with uh, the Catalan uh, separatists, and this includes an amnesty. So since you yourself are Catalan, I'd like to know what you think of this. Mr. Burrell? Hola, Marekin Babari. Oh, well, it's a very complicated uh, issue, you know, you have to look at all the sides very carefully. You don't want to, you don't want to be like speaking ahead of, it's a very internal matter of a member state and the European Commission does not have an opinion. Uh, but that in that fact, was actually right. In fact, in fact, I think mo these people would much rather hear me tell a joke since this is supposed to be a comedy show. Yes, please. Would you like to hear Joseph Burrell tell a joke? What? Please. So this is, so it's a Russian, a Chinese, and an Israeli ring, walking ring, to a bar. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, 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 your phone is ringing, Mr. Burrell. Um, oh, hello, hello. Oh, President Biden. Ah, you do have the number. Um, yeah. Oh, you need a high-level representative from the EU to uh, attend Mr. Kissinger's funeral. 
and you're not going to invite Ursula or Charlotte or anybody else. Do you want Josep Borrell to come instead? I, I think he would. Mr. Borrell, are you ready for this to come? I, no, no, I, no, I'll be right there, Joe. I'll be right there. He says he's there imminently. Thank you. Oh, bye I bye. Love, I love funerals, Kelly. I'm so sorry, but. It's, it's been a pleasure to have you, everybody. Thank you so much. Josep Borrell! Really Gracias. Gracias. Wow. What a treat.